Hey guys, it's Allie, and today I wanted to give you a little Photoshop tutorial and kind of walk you through uh, what I am planning to do for my day eight and a little bit about how I put together something like this. Um, so I'm in Photoshop right now. These steps will be similar if you're working in Elements. They won't be exactly the same, but they will be very similar, um, some of the tips and things that I'm going to show you how to do. So first off here, I have the picture that I took this morning of my kids who happened to have a no school day today because we had uh, rain, ice rain. We didn't have snow, but we had, fr oh, excuse me, freezing rain. We had freezing rain today. So they were super excited. I think it probably felt a little bit like Christmas morning for them to wake up. They got to sleep in and then wake up and realize they had no school. And the first thing that Anna said was, can we have a Christmas movie marathon? And knowing me, I was like, absolutely you can. So that is what they are doing today. Um, and so what I want to do is I took this picture. I went downstairs. I took the picture. First of all, I'm super excited because we actually have um, a tree up now. You can see it in the background there. And you can see lots of tubs that are part of storing things during uh, our remodel. So that's in the background and uh, Aaron has done an awesome amount of um, putting things away and getting that space cleared over there anyway. So that's another happy piece of today. So the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I wanna crop this image to six by eight. This is gonna be going on the back of my pocket page from day seven that had the um, everybody writing down what they wanted for Christmas. So here, what I'm gonna do, I grab the crop tool. I already have this entered in six inches by eight inches at 300 uh, pixels per inch. This is going to set um, the size of my page when I crop it. Now, one of the things that you're gonna see me do here is I wanna keep, part of the reason when I took this picture, I had in mind the idea that I wanted to use the space up above um, for my journaling or for a title or for something. Um, I haven't figured that out exactly just yet, but it's gonna be used for something, something along those lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter. And so now you can see I have my rule, my rulers turned on so I can see um, that this actually is six by eight. Let's see if we can just zoom in a little bit more. See if it gives us any other little options. Oh, that's good enough. I can probably make my page a little bit bigger here. Um, so now I have this photo. Now, one of the things that I do when I'm wanting to adjust the color, there's a few things I know I'm gonna do here. I wanna adjust the color, and I also want to make this area uh, kind of all one color. So I think I'll do that first, and I'm gonna use something called the clone tool. So if you click, come over here, and, and it's in your, in your tool palette, clone stamp tool. And I have already adjusted um, the size up here. So what you do with your clone stamp is you pick an area, you hold down option and you click, and then that is what is going to be repeated. So each time I hold down um, and click the option, then that's the area that's getting um, clone stamped essentially. So this is the this is the technique that I do when I want to make more sky in a picture maybe, like if I wanna make uh, a, a picture taller than it was originally, I wanna add space to it. Right now we're just gonna, whoops, see, and you can see like if I come down here and I hold option and I click, then if I come up here, I'm, I'm literally cloning from down below. Um, so yes, there's lots of different things that you can do with that, but mainly for me, I'm just trying to get I want it to be lighter and give me some space here for, let's see if I gotta, it's, sometimes it's hard to talk and do this at the same time. And so you can see you get all kinds of lines depending on where you're doing it. I'm not doing an awesome job at it today, but um, I'm gonna get there. So let's see, I, I'm liking that lighter color, which is really kind of what I want. So if I'm clicking, like here, each time you see that little circle, that means I'm holding down the option key and I'm clicking to kind of grab that color and take it with me. Um, there's other things that you could do in this space too. Like you could just uh, essentially crop it out, but I kind of want this kind of background up there. And you'll see that there's gonna be some other ways that I'm adjusting it in a couple minutes here too. I don't want those hard lines there. Let's see, I just wanna get it. Just kind of smooth is really what I'm what I'm trying to do here. Okay. 
So I think that's good enough for, for now. That's gonna hold probably my journaling and title. I'm thinking that this will end up being a one page um, entry, one page story for today. So the other thing that I'm gonna be using is a program called Rad Lab that works in conjunction with Photoshop. So I purchased the, the application and when you open it or when you install it on your computer, then it you have this little icon that comes up in Photoshop to be able to open it. So if I click on open Rad Lab, some of you guys have seen me talk about this program before, it gives me basically all of these different filtered options. Um, and you can see over on the side, you can see what it looks like in advance. Um, all kinds of different ones. Usually the ones that I like to use are lights on, um, and I'm gonna probably do that a couple times there. And I don't care, you know, it's, I'm going for the overall image, right? And then I think I wanna use the cool as a cucumber. So that cools it down a little bit, but that's a little bit too blue for me. So I'm gonna move it down just a little bit there. And also just to show you some other options, that one's called divine light. That's a little bit too bright. Um, previous Decembers, I've used one called, there's one called Iron Mouse. Actually, that one looks pretty good. Bullet Tooth is one I've used before. I kind of like this one for this particular picture today. I think that that would work good. And then you can kind of adapt over here if you want it to be brighter uh, as well. Okay, so that is how I do a lot of editing. Sometimes I will use just the editing features in Photoshop itself, but a lot of times I'll just come over into Rad Lab and then you can make it black and white. It has great um, black and white options as well, but I think I'm gonna go for color on this one. So you can say finish. And now I have my updated picture, which is a lot brighter. Um, probably even than it was actually in the, you know, in the house at that time. But this is gonna work for, um, for what I wanna use it for. So then Red Lab has its own layer. So you can turn it off and you can see that was what my original image looked like. And here's what the edited one looks like. So obviously it's a very edited, um, but for this particular one, I think I'm okay with that. Another thing that you can do if you want, um, another tool that I often use especially for editing my project photos, is this dodge and burn tool. Let's see, I have come up with some options here. Um, let's increase the size. Uh, we gotta click, so what you need to do in this case is if you wanna edit on top of the Rad Lab one, you do need to merge the layers together, which I'm gonna go ahead and do because I know that this is the one that I wanna use. But this is another like brightening. I'm not gonna actually use it on there, I just wanted to show you guys. Um, you know, I could use it on the top to brighten that up just a little bit more as well. Uh, it's great for kind of lightening the, the areas that you want to be more white uh, generally. And I'm gonna take a minute and I'm actually gonna save this right now so that in case something comes up, this is day eight, um, I'm gonna save it now just so that I, in case I need it. Now the other thing I'm thinking about doing here is using one of my six by eight layered templates, the December daily layered templates. So let's go and check those out here on my computer. Layered templates, six by eight, oh, those are the overlays. Six by eight layered templates. Okay, so here's the preview image of those. I'm thinking about Celebrate. That would probably work good for this one. Um, these are the previews. Or Be of Good Cheer was the other one I thought. Let's actually do that one. I like that sentiment. So we'll find that one on here. Here's that layered template. And obviously this one was designed for, you know, that you could have a photo down here, you could have a photo underneath, there's all kinds of things you could do with that. But really what I want from this is I want the word art. So I'm going to float this window and then I'm gonna come over here and say, be of good cheer. And I'm gonna drag and drop that over onto um, my page for today. And then I'm gonna select that layer so that I can actually move it. Here we go. And then of course we are going to change the color. And I'm thinking maybe a green, let's try that. So one of the things that I like to do um, when changing color of word art is to pick a color from inside my photo. So let's, let's try a couple different ones. Let's try a green first. I'm gonna pick a green from the tree. That's kind of a, na or a forest green. I'm gonna adjust that so that's on the top. That one's actually gonna be a little bit dark. We'll just see what it looks like. And then I'm gonna make sure that that layer is selected, the word art layer, and I'm gonna to go to image, excuse me, I'm gonna to go to edit fill, 
and I'm going to put foreground color, which is the color that I've selected in the foreground over here and click OK. And so then we have be of good cheer right on there. Actually, I like that. I think that's a good um, solution. And then what I'm going to be doing next is just creating a text box. So I clicked on the type tool to create this text box and I'm going to click and drag to create a space for my journaling and we'll see if I'm able to fit uh, my story in here. If not, I will adjust it a little bit and let's make it about nine point type. We can zoom in a little bit as well. Um, and then I'm just going to start typing my story. I think I want my text. Let's make it black just to start off with. Um, okay. So you can see how I'm starting here. Uh, this font that I'm using right now is called Rocket. Um, that's the one that automatically came up. I think that would probably be a fine one to use. Another one that I use often is the typewriter font Remington Noiseless. That one might work as well. That one, you can see how much bigger that one is. Um, that So I would probably need to make the type size smaller. I think I'm gonna try it with Rocket first and see um, see what happens. But anyway, I, I can't tell my story and type at the same time and talk to you guys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish this up and then you will see it on my table. I don't know if I'm going to add any uh, additional embellishments to this one. This one may just be a purely digital page for today that will get printed out and then adhered to the back of the pocket page that I used yesterday. But I will have another video that just shows uh, how it is ending up in the album. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them on uh, in the blog post below and I hope you guys have a great day.